The patient in this scene looked up her symptoms on the internet and is quite anxious about the possibility of having a brain tumor. The nurse is able to acknowledge how frightened the patient is and has a very non-judgmental approach. Notice how the nurse's assessment through the health history uncovers other pertinent information that leads to the diagnosis. The nurse in this scene asks both the patient and her sister about staying in a room during the admission process. In this situation, the sister has been listed on the patient's HIPAA form. This nurse should be aware of the patient preferences on the HIPAA form before interviewing a patient in front of others for health history. The sister who accompanies the patient is a valuable asset to the patient for support for both during the visit and in the future. Family members can often supply information that the patient forgets, and in this case, the sister is able to relate that the patient was not oriented to date, time, or day when she first woke in the morning. Knock, knock. Hi, I'm here to ask some questions so we can help you feel better. My name's Emma Kate. I've been in the emergency department for four years. According to the admission information, you must be Lynn. Yeah, that's me. Glad to meet you. Who do you have with you here today, Lynn? Uh, this is my sister, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Lynn, are you comfortable talking to me with Taylor in the room? I'm gonna ask some questions that you may wanna keep private. You're able to change your mind at any time. And Taylor, you are free to leave at any time. Mm, ah, yes. I see that you do have Taylor on your HIPAA form. Yes. Right now, I think Taylor needs to be here. She's the one that convinced me to come. And why did she convince you to come? Was there a reason why you didn't want to come? I think I have a brain tumor, and I'm really afraid to find out. I'm in college, and I'm too young for that. That's a serious concern. I can understand why you are worried. May I ask why you think you might have a brain tumor? Um, I looked up symptoms on the internet. I've had a headache and blurred vision for the last month. And I've lost almost 10 pounds without trying in the last two months. The headaches and blurred vision make it really hard to see the screen during lectures or to read my assignments. I see. And what has gotten worse today? Well, when she woke up this morning, she wasn't making much sense. Uh, she didn't know the date or where we were. She's always been a straight-A student, so these headaches are really a problem. She wants to go to engineering school, which is so competitive. Sounds like school is stressful. It's not very difficult, but it is stressful, especially in the last couple weeks when I can't even see. Hmm. Well, it sounds like you keep high standards for yourself. <laughs> I'm glad though that you came in so we can figure out what's going on with the vision and the headaches. Now let me, yes, I'm gonna confirm some information on your admission information. You are 19 and a student at the university? Yeah, that's true. Okay. You and your sister live in an apartment. Yes, that way I can take the bus to the university. Awesome. And for exercise, you get, you run two miles, three to four days per week. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. also true. Awesome, thank you for those details, Lynn. I have a few more questions. Have you found that you've been more thirsty recently? Yes, that's a sign of a brain tumor. It can sign for a few things. Let me ask a few more questions. Let's see. Yes. Have you been waking up in the night because you're thirsty? Yes. I've gone through almost a gallon of almond milk in a week, plus all the water I've been drinking at night. Last night, I drank four big glasses of water before bed, and then I was up three times in the night using the bathroom. Okay. Have you realized that you've been more tired than usual? Yes, I'm tired all the time. Okay. And then, have you found that you are more hungry than usual, even though you're losing weight? Yes. It's sounding like a brain tumor, isn't it? I don't know about that. Actually, it says here that family history-wise, you've had several people in your family diagnosed with diabetes. Oh no, I don't want that. You have to test your blood and watch what you eat? I'm in college, I don't have time for that. 
our great uncle had two toes amputated and they said it was due to his diabetes. I'm a runner, I can't have that happen to me. I understand that this is scary, but we're gonna figure out what's going on. I'm gonna send over your information and your medical history over to the physician. Someone from lab will be up to draw some blood. After the doctor talks to you, I'll be back in. Knock, knock. Hi. I know the doctor just told you you were diagnosed with diabetes. I understand that this is a scary thing, but I want to let you know that we're going to find ways for you to continue living your life. Now, I know that you are interested in running, so I actually looked up some diabetics. There's two columns on diabetic athletes, triathletes, swimmers, all those fun things. You're going to be able to continue living your life. This is also overwhelming. I'm here to help. Where do we start? I'm glad you're here to help, Taylor. Today we're going to give you some insulin. Another important thing is managing her blood sugars. I actually have a handout right here on insulin and the proper area for blood sugar. I'll teach you both how to check her blood sugar and how to give insulin. Taylor, I'm actually really glad that you are here because it's important for friends and family to know how to do those things as well. Lynn, What's some of your big concerns? I don't know. I don't want to have a toe amputated. <laughs> I agree that that is something no one wants to happen. Now, I have scheduled you an appointment with the diabetes clinic. You'll meet with a diabetic educator. There's also classes you can take with other newly diagnosed diabetics as well. Taylor, you are free to attend any of those classes and appointments. I'm going to go get the glucometer and the insulin, and I'll be right back. Number one, the nurse ends the visit making appointments for follow-up. We assume that both the patient and the sister were taught how to use the insulin pen as well as a, gluco a glucometer. How would the nurse assess the knowledge level of the patient and the sister about a glucometer and the insulin pen? Number two, what other critical elements should the nurse include before discharging a patient who has been newly diagnosed with diabetes? Number three, family members can provide valuable information to healthcare providers. However, it's up to the provider to validate the information. What experiences with family members help you understand to both value, I'll retake. Number three, Family members can provide valuable information to health providers. However, it's up to the provider to validate the information. What experience with family members help you understand both the value and uncertainty when including family members to obtain health information? Number four, what are the reasons that a family member or friend should learn how to check blood sugars and administer insulin?